fog rolling down the creek and uh, the ghouls and goblins are probably out there in it because Halloween's tomorrow and uh, we just want to spend the day in here creating something that you will enjoy. So come on, let's go to the kitchen and see what's happening. Okay, here we are in the kitchen of the aftermath. We've got pretty much everything we need. Got our cell phone if we need to call somebody. That's important. Got our TV remote control in case we want to turn the TV it? up or down, just kind of okay. like that. Oh. And if you can hear it, here comes a downpour and rain. All right. Raining outside, we're going to cook the pot roast here today on the aftermath. Um, you're going to just kind of be over my shoulder, kind of above me there, and uh, hopefully you'll get to see a way that we cook pot roast, and you might like it. Might not, though. We'll see. Uh, we're cooking kind of small today. We've got you know, our piece of meat here, which is uh, it's grain-fed, you know, it's boneless shoulder roast. Uh, it's about four pounds is all it is. We've got a couple people, me and Teresa. You know, and then maybe Jim or a couple other people on the dock might be eating a little bit of it, but you don't have to cook a lot on a boat. And uh, we want to always cook easy and uh, try to keep cleanup good easy. So, we're going to take this. We're going to be cooking in a crock pot today. All we do with the meat for right now, because it is going to be a slow cook, we don't have to do any kind of rub on the meat or anything like that. We're just going straight into the crock pot with it. Crock pot is off at this time. No need to have it on and, and searing the meat when you put it in there until you get everything, a great portion of this in there and get it ready and get it going. We will do this in a few different steps across the day because there are some things we add as it cooks. Um, one of the things I've done is I've taken an onion, um, about a half an onion, and I've chopped it up. I uh, went ahead and did that so you didn't have to sit here and watch me chop onions, but you can see I didn't chop them fine. You know, I just uh, kind of left them semi-large uh, as far as the chops. And uh, I just sprinkle that in there over the top. Um, it doesn't really make any difference whether it stays on the top or not uh, because it is going to have a liquid type of broth in it. The other thing that we do now is we take portobello mushrooms. I usually get the sliced, large capped portobellos. They seem to work a little bit better. They're already sliced, and, and then all we're going to do is do one more basic slice to them, which I've done here, and you can see I'm ending up with sliced caps of about half the cap, and they're about that thick. So we take uh, what is basically a whole two um, portobellos, two large portobello mushrooms, if you happen to be taking your mushrooms and, you know, as far as a whole cap and then slicing it and then cutting them in half. It'd be about two large. So we go ahead and we put those in there. And they, once again, kind of go right on top, but it's not going to make a lot of difference because of where they're at. Um, and some people do and some people don't. I went ahead and washed these off. Uh, you know, um, they are washed in the in the process of, of packaging when they slice them. But, you know, you can wash them off. The problem with mushrooms is they do absorb water, so you want to wash them in, you know, in, in, a, in a cold water and, and go pretty quickly with it, rub them off, and then, and then put them in. Heat probably is going to take care of them. Some people also say you can microwave mushrooms for just a short period of time, and that supposedly kills if you're worried about any bacteria or anything. So, we've got that in there, and what else do we do now? Well, the interesting portion is coming up. Some people cook with um, ketchup a lot. Um, some people don't. We've got a whole brand new unopened bottle of ketchup here that we're going to go ahead and open up. And, a better way. And what do we do with it or how much of it is it? Um, no particular brand. Um, it's mostly for the cooking purpose, but uh, you know, you can use any ketchup you like. We just generally use what we can find and is the most economical. What do we do with the ketchup? The ketchup goes right in there. And you say, how much? Well, in this size crack pot, which is a 10 inch crack pot, um, I don't know the exact volume. Um, it's probably 
a gallon and a half, maybe two gallons. But in this particular one, the whole bottle of ketchup goes in here. And this one is a 64 ounce bottle. Um, and I guess if I did the math, I could probably tell you exactly what the crock pot is or get even closer. But you basically want to really fill that up. Um, you can take a mushroom or whatever if you want and kind of get it to go on down in there. We want it to uh, penetrate down into the meat. You can also shake the crock pot a little bit. And at this point, we can go ahead and plug the crock pot in. And we started on um, the high setting. And one of the last things that we do is early in the morning. So you, when you're cooking these early in the morning, you probably don't indulge a lot in it. But we take just a regular domestic beer and take a sip. Yeah, it's okay. And the beer goes in right on top of the ketchup. One can is good for right now. No stirring. Top goes on. And we're cooking our roast. While we start the cooking, I just take that time to go ahead and clean up some of the things we don't need anymore. Package back up the onions. Boy, I made a mistake once and put the onion back in the refrigerator, um, not in a baggie. And not only did I notice it, but my lovely wife noticed it, and I got in trouble. Always bag them back up, because they will fumigate everything in your refrigerator. So we are cooking, and we'll be back. In about three hours, three and a half hours, um, it'll be smelling wonderful, and you'll get to see what is going on. Okay, so here we are. It's about uh, three hours, four hours later, three and a half hours later, and we've been cooking. The boat smells you can't even, if there was smell of vision you'd know, but I can't even describe it. It's absolutely wonderful. My little buddy over there, he's been standing here looking up. Now he's over there asleep. He's just in Aroma Dreamville. So, what are we going to do now? First off, we're going to look at this a little bit and go, yeah, it's looking good. It's got a, it's got a nice consistency going with it. We can now take a spoon. We can start looking in here and seeing that this is really starting to cook. Um, the meat, we can we can touch on the meat and we can tell that it's starting to have that little spongy feel. That means it's it's cooking. It's, it's slowly cooking with uh, the broth and, and everything that's going on here. At this point, we are getting ready to be able to start to add a couple of things we still need to add. One of the things that um, I always tend to add um, about halfway through is if you're if you like a pepper, like a stone ground or a you know a ground pepper, this is the time to do it. You don't want to do it at the end because it's going to be an overbearing. Uh, flavor in in the food. Um, so at this particular point we're going to stone grind. Stone grind high you know, so it it has the time as it falls to aerate um, as it goes. So we, we stone grind pepper. We also have um, another pepper that I want I like to add myself which is a Peppercorn. It's a uh, um, comes in these little spice grinders. Uh, they come in a lot of different styles, but they have a white and they have a black and they have a gray uh, peppercorn. I like the gray, and in that same case, we grind over. And some won't go in the pot, and that's okay. 
we're going to grind just a small amount over that. The other thing um, that I'll always do is um, I'm a big uh, proponent of garlic. I love garlic. Garlic is good for you, good for your heart, good for your arteries, good for a lot of reasons, but it's also a great carrier of season. We've got this pepper over the top. Once you put the, the, um, the, the uh, garlic over the top of that, what we end up doing is that becomes a carrier. Garlic tends to go through and permeate through everything. One of the reasons it's good for your arteries and so forth, it goes through, it permeates through your bloodstream. Uh, the garlic also carries some of your spices. So we're going to be adding some garlic. One of the things though that we will add um, before we'll do that is a little bit of paprika. Some people like it and some don't. Um, if you've never tried it and you don't know whether you like it or not, just shake the, the, the dispenser a little bit, put a little on your finger, try it. It is what it is. You immediately know and you either, some people go, oh, I, I, no, I don't like that. And uh, a lot of people go, oh, that's, that's pretty nice. Paprika is going to permeate also through the food. It's a lot like the garlic, so it carries along with everything. The last thing that uh, you know I'll put before I'm going to put those two is uh, a Morton's Natured Seasons. Um, it's a great seasoning blend. Um, what it does is it helps smooth everything together. And so you know on a seasoning blend what we do. I tend to take um, you know, something that I can kind of measure it in. I'm not a big measuring cup person or something. So I'll take a ladle and I will put in the bottom of the ladle until what looks like about, oh, um, maybe an eighth inch deep. You know, not a quarter, but an eighth inch. And if I tap it here, and I kind of look and I see that I think it's about an eighth inch. If I really question, I'll look at it in a knife and go, yeah, that's about an eighth inch. And with that, I will then take that and I put it in in pinches. I move it around with, uh, you know, my fingers to get the, pit, the, the, the spread right. Kind of get it all over the top. Um, the sauce in here is now starting actually to boil a little bit and that's good. So we're going to put most all of that spice in there. And that should be about right. Anything else you really don't want to, you know, if you don't use it all, you don't want to obviously put it back into the, the container. If you're really good, you can go into your hand and get it just right. Um, I don't teach too much of the hand thing. Um, the paprika. I use it really sparingly and it can go in a little bit later. We, we're going to need some more cooking as this thing goes on. So I'm going to put basically some short amount of, of little um, shakes on it like that. And then the garlic powder. This garlic powder actually on a boat you'll find garlic powder is a lot like some other powders, flowers and things. They will tend to get um, to can tend to get hard. There's moisture on a boat. So you can shake them up. It doesn't hurt it. You just got to re-break it up. At that point, what we do with the garlic is we shake on the garlic until you get basically a very light covering of the garlic across the top of the meat. Perfect. We've got that in place now. Um, a lot of people at this point are going to go ahead and stir. We're not going to stir right just yet. We are going to cover it back up, make sure the, the cover's in place. We're going to leave it on hot. We're going to let it continue to cook, and stirring comes here in just a little bit. This is going great. More to come, more interesting things, and then the dinner of a lifetime on a boat. We'll be right back. Okay. We're back. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon. We're getting ready to do our final preparation on this before it cooks for about another hour or so. This is going to be a couple little unique little twists to the thing. Not, not anything really crazy. But um, what we've got 
we've got a tomato. We're going to go ahead and put that in there because what that's going to do is set off the tomato paste a little bit. But we want to sweeten that. And um, anytime you do a sweetener, anything to to sweeten up, you know your 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 dinner, whatever. If you've done a broth, a beef broth, anything, you want to put the sugar or sweetener, or some people use. Um, like an orange or whatever, you always want to be sure and put that in late because anything that tends to sweeten food also tends to cook off. So we're going to do this now. Um, we're going to do it a little bit unusual with the tomato. Um, I use Splenda just because I kind of gotten onto that. You know, like a, the little yellow packs. You can use sugar. You could use whatever you want. But what we do um, in this particular case, I'm going to do it also with the tomato here and we're going to rub it into the tomato just like that and we're going to do that and while I'm doing a couple other things we're going to let that sit for a few seconds because uh, anything that's citrus and or acidy is going to soak in um, your sugars or or your bases that are, are, are tend to be sweet. So we've got that um, we're going to set it right over here. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to slice up the few pieces of the portobellos that I did not finish with. And they're going on into the... Oh, that smells good. That smells really good. Um, but uh, we're slicing this up long ways, not into short pieces. We're going long. Um, these will not cook all the way down, so so they're going to be there kind of as a as a uh, as a thick piece that comes um, you know into play here. And we're going to now slice a tomato. It's been sitting here with the sugar on it, and we're going to put the tomatoes in there just whole. Now the one last thing we're going to do here, once again, a little beer, domestic beer. You could do any kind of beer you want. If you want something other than domestic, you can use that. Yep, this one's good too. It's okay. We put it back in here. And she goes on for another hour. You know, we've been uh, 10 hours, something like that, and uh, you've seen what we've done. Now let's see what happens. We're going to take this out of here, and I can guarantee you by the smell, it's going to be good. Okay. Whew, it's hot. What we're going to need to do here, because... We've still got a great broth. We're going to take the meat out and we're going to go ahead and probably slice it. It's not a classic roast beef that, or a, um, a, a pot roast, excuse me, that would be, you know, served in big chunks so much. This should be a very soft meat, but can still be cut kind of into meat sections. So we're going to pull it out, we're going to cut it a little bit, and then we're going to take the sauces that we have that we want to harvest and we're going to keep those too because we have that mushroom and some of the other stuff in there that's going to be a great sauce. It's going to be very liquidy sauce though so we're not going to you know we're not, you're not going to use all of this. If you had something else, if you had a bread or something that you wanted to use a sauce on, even a mashed potato or so forth which we've got some uh, that we've cooked here tonight uh, you would maybe put it on that, that would be very good, but for the most part the meat's going to have its own sauce and then you're going to kind of try to filter out and get, get the bigger pieces of the, of, the, uh, of the mushrooms of the portobellos, not so much the onions and stuff because they're going to have cooked in and they're going to be part of the meat. So here we go. We're going to take uh, some tongs and a couple of tools to be able to do this with <clears throat> and we're going to 
take our piece of meat and get it out of here. Here we go. There's a good place to bite. And I can already tell you the way it's coming apart. It's cooked perfectly. You can see right there. I can barely whoop, I can barely hold on to it, so I can't hold it up there for your presentation too long. That piece that just went down in there, we're going to go ahead and get out this way. Put it all over here. See if I've missed anything. There's a couple little pieces. Here we go. Wonderful. <clears throat> Keep trying here. There's some mushrooms. Throw them over there. And we'll keep going here. Oh, this smells wonderful. Now we have a huge amount of sauce that if we want to use it for something, we can. Now, we're going to scoot that over there. We'll leave that sauce there and uh, being ready to be, you know, prepared and used for whatever we want. Now, for the, the slicing of this, sharp knife if you have it. If you can and if you like to serve it, you can serve it in slices or you can break it apart depending upon how well it's cooked. This particular piece has cooked well enough it's going to really be a broken meat so that's kind of what we're going to go with cut it down the grain that'll give you an ability to cut some bigger pieces off so as you serve it you have kind of big pieces to serve but um, outside of that you're going to have in this particular case because we've cooked it so long it's going to be a, a, a broken meat, almost like a pulled beef, almost like pulled pork, but a pulled beef. And uh, it's going to be wonderful. And at this point, I, I do advise, just for your own pleasure, because you've cooked it all day long, um, pick up a piece with a knife or whatever. There you go. Just kind of like that. And eat some and enjoy it before anybody else does. Wonderful. You won't believe how it tastes. Fog's rolling in the windows. Watched the movie last night, The Fog. It's kind of scary. I don't want to turn on the radio and listen to that woman telling me what's coming through the fog. But, what's coming to us is right here. Now that is a boat pot roast. I wish you could taste it. You have to cook it for yourself. But I can tell you, there's people walking up the dock because of the smell. There it is. It's ready to serve. We're going to start serving. Paper plates or china, whatever you want. I prefer paper. And if you do paper, when you're all said and done, you clean your crock pot. And that's all you have to clean. Everything else goes in the trash. We'll be back again. We'll show you uh, more things to cook on the boat. We'll have uh, different ideas of things to be easy to cook, but that will amaze your friends. So come on back and cook with us. This is Captain Joe, Marionette Dream Cruises, Kentucky Yacht Charters, and just uh, Marionette Boats. So, enjoy your evening. We're going to have some of the best meat you've ever tasted on a boat. And a wonderful day cooking it. 
See you. Happy sailing. Bye.